going everyone? Today I have another mod for my 2008 Saab 9.3 Turbo X. If you guys have been following the channel for the last few months, you'll know I've already done quite a bit of work to this car, that being thanks to Krona, DOADA, E Euro Parts, and a few other companies. But today I have another project courtesy of DOADA. Today we're going to be installing their radiator hose kit. So, as you can see from the little picture right there, there's quite a few hoses. So, this is going to be quite a long process. There's also a bunch of different hose clamps in here uh, that we'll be using. We will have to reuse a couple like little connectors and stuff from the stock system, but other than that, every single hose will be replaced. So I want to give a huge shout out to DO88 for sending me out this. Of course, I already have their full intake system and their intercooler and charge pipes on the Turbo X, and I've loved them both. DO88 makes some of the best cooling products, not only for your Saab, but for just about every other European car brand. So if you've got something besides a Saab that's European and you're watching this video and want to upgrade your intercooler or any sort of cooling parts for your car, make sure to check out DO88. I'll leave a link to their site at the top of the description. But before we get started with any of the actual install, we've got to start by draining the coolant, so let's start with that. So to get to the radiator drain plug, we're going to have to first take off this piece of plastic right here. There's about eight bolts all around it. Not very hard. I'm on the passenger side of the car. There's this little support right here and right above it. Ignore the rust on my car, but with a flashlight you can see right above it, right in the center of the screen there is the little radiator cap. So we're gonna twist that off and drain the coolant. So I think the clear first step here in doing any of this would be to remove the coolant expansion tank. So we're going to start by doing that first. So if you look down there, there's a tiny little blue wire that we have to unhook that's connected to the expansion tank. So I'm going to work on that next. So now there's that hose right there on the bottom of it that we're going to have to disconnect somehow. So while I've got two identical hoses next to me, the one right here being the DO88 hose and this being the regular OEM hose, I figured I would discuss why even bother doing something like this? You know, it's not like upgrading your intercooler where it's going to provide you a ton of obvious benefits and it's one of those mods that you should really do if you really want to make more power. Doing a mod like this isn't going to give you power gains. It's not going to make your car faster, but what it will do is it's going to make it a lot more durable, especially living out here in Arizona in the desert like I do. These V6s, from what I've heard, like to run hot. I haven't experienced that at all with this car, but God forbid it does start to run hot. This hose is gonna give away pretty quick and then I'm gonna have to dig down somewhere deep in the engine bay. Well, not this one specifically. I'm gonna have to dig down deep in the engine bay to replace it. If you're someone like me who, for instance, lives in a hotter climate or you wanna do some more performance mods for your car, or especially if you like to track your sob, because there are some people out there who track their sobs, especially if you track it, you definitely need to do a mod like this. Because when your engine's running super hard, that coolant's getting really hot, it's putting a lot of stress on the cooling system and everything, these hoses are gonna be the first thing to go. So this DO88 hose is better for a variety of reasons, but just from holding the two here, I can tell that one, the DO88 hose is so much stiffer. I mean, I'm squeezing it as hard as I can, really. I mean, not to say I'm weak or anything, but it is hard to even get it to indent a ton. But this one, I just give it a little pressure and I'm touching both sides of them together. It's a much softer material than what this Steel 88 hose is. This Steel 88 hose is much thicker 
It's much better material, it's much higher quality. Not to say the OEM isn't high quality, but this is just the best of the best if you're trying to upgrade the cooling system for your car. So like I said guys, once again, if you're interested in any DO88 product, specifically this or their intercooler intake, make sure to check out the link at the top of the description below to go to their site. Now that I'm done talking about that, let's get back to the install. As I'm under the car here, I think I'm gonna try and do all the ones under the car first. And a lot of this stuff is just gonna be so hard to film. But you see that rusty or corroded spot right there, right next to the DO88 charge pipe. That hose right there comes off of there, runs right down here, and you can see the clamp for it right there. So I'm going to do that one next because I think it's going to be pretty easy. Just one right there, and then the one up there so let's get to that so the first side is off the side that attaches to the radiator directly now this side i have it loosened but i need to wiggle it off now if you look at where i just took this lower radiator hose off which by the way i had to cut it off uh it that is just extremely corroded right around there if anyone knows why that's corroded please let me know or if i should be concerned about it uh, nothing, there's no holes in that metal piece or anything, but I'm just wondering how that got so corroded. Let's go ahead and get the new piece on. Now, the one problem that I did run into when getting this off in the first place was also the fact that this pretty much rubs right up against this DO88 charge pipe here. So sliding the new one on might be a little bit difficult, so I'm going to use some Vaseline and just hope there's enough room, pretty much. So there it is on there, that Vaseline definitely helped a ton. So now I'm going to finish tightening this all down down here and then we'll head back up top. This next one I'm going to do is right by the intake. As you can see, the filter would be right here. So this is like the upper radiator hose, I guess. So there's a clamp right here and then the way down in here that connects to the radiator. And our second one is right down in there. There's one thing I've learned from the past two hours of doing this is that if you don't have a good set of these, you're not gonna be able to do this. A lot of these hoses are really stuck on there. So because these hose clamps, they give you a variety of different sized hose clamps, but no other ones will fit on this upper radiator hose besides these, which they seem pretty loose. So instead of trying to like wiggle my hand around in a weird way, it's gonna be much easier to get them semi-tight right now, and then I'll slide them on and tighten them the rest of the way after. So, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, some of these hoses I'm really not going to be able to film installing them. So I've got a big mess of hoses right here. By the way, some of these are extra because it depends on front wheel drive or cross wheel drive. They're, some of the hoses vary a little bit, so I think there's four extra hoses that they send you. But the next ones I'm going to try to tackle are these that come off the water pump right here. It basically feeds the whole way back around and into there's a couple hoses right there. It's basically those right there. You guys aren't really going to be able to see me do anything with that. You're just going to see my hands deep in the engine bay fiddling around and you're not going to get to see what I'm doing really. We're going to skip ahead like two or three hours and we're going to go to when I'm starting to patch everything back up once I have all these other hoses on. So I'm going to catch up with you guys in a couple hours once I've made some progress on this and we start putting them back together.
I filled it up with coolant. Now all we really need to do is let it run for a bit, let the coolant uh, cycle through, then we'll need to fill it up a little bit more, lower the car, and we'll be all good to go. So I'm really happy with how this install turned out. I thought it would be a lot more like stressful going into it because uh, it just seemed like it was a lot of work. Once again, if you haven't already checked out DO88, I mean, I've got just about everything they have for this car on my Turbo X now, which is pretty awesome. But if you guys have not already checked them out, make sure to do so. Once again, link at the top of the description to their website. Pick something up for your Saab. Do yourself a favor. And uh, with that being said, that's all for today, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.